waiting our turn to go down on the Anderton boat lift. Not done this before, we're really excited about it. Looking forward to doing some river cruising and uh, a little bit windy, rain's threatened, but that's the way it goes, so let's go do it. We're not moving, friend. <laughs> what does no, that mean? There, there was another boat that wanted to come and join us at the last minute. They just went past and asked if they could join in. I said, like, I don't know if we're waiting for them. Um, I just want to get on with it now. You do feel very vulnerable. Here we go then. Built in 1875 and in use for over a hundred years, the Anderton boat lift had been lifting boats 50 feet to and from the River Weaver. It's the only means of uh, access to the River Weaver from the Trenton Mersey Canal. Closed in 1983 due to corrosion, it was finally reopened in 2002. Well, that was amazing. Really enjoyed that. What an experience. Did it live up to all your expectations, having waited so many years for it? It's a bit of an anticlimax, to be <laughs> honest, but I'd have rather it have gone <laughs> like a fairground. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I'm glad but, it didn't. <laughs> but I know it was, it was a really good experience, and uh, it's gone really windy out here, and we came out, there was a boat coming in, so they got their timings all wrong. Um, but we're back on river for the first time in a long time and uh, really looking forward to it. It took us quite a long while to get out of the boat lift because the uh, gates at the bottom were sticking 
Yeah, and the uh, sluice gates <laughs> weren't opening up, were they? So. We, we thought we might have to go back up and reverse out at one point, but um, yeah, obviously we've got out and uh, big wide river, new boat that we're not used to. Yeah. Wind, yeah. rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's just get on with it then. Thanks for coming down with us anyway. Yeah, and here's to a good couple of weeks river cruising. Yeah. Nice bank holiday, friend. <laughs> May bank holiday, typical May day weather. But it doesn't matter, we've got our dinette and we've got our board games. What more do you need? And that's a wine, apparently. <laughs> The boat cranking behind us is none other than Robbie Cumming. You'll know him from his YouTube channel and also from the BBC TV series Canal Boat Diaries. And uh, we're going to moor up together and go and have a couple of beers. Great to see him again. Um, hang on a minute. It's 20 past 11. We're still not dressed. This is my early morning slobby clothes. Not washed. Sorry. Coffee on the go. That isn't an advert by the way. And we're working and we're sitting at the Dinette and it's just fab. But we've been asked a few times why the Dinette has been so important to us. Why people uh, like us and other YouTubers rave about a Dinette and this is it. We would never normally enjoy sitting on the sofa with laptops working, but I'm just sitting here answering messages and emails. And it's lovely, isn't it? It's fab. Yeah, it's great. I'm not working. You're buy He's buying I'm on stuff. EBay. <laughs> He's buying stuff. I've been weaving to earn some money and Rich spends it, but that's okay. We're in a lovely place. Sun's just come out, so we are going to walk. We'll walk the dogs in a bit, but it has been raining. Fire's warm and lit. Just, ah, oh, it's fab. Even working is fab. It's really cold though, Fran. It's been so cold, hasn't Hail it, this stones. last month? Hailstones, yeah. Hailstones. Um, I can't believe we've got, I've moaned in the past about people having fires on in May, but we've got the fire on it. It's been so cold. Um, the penguin stove, we've got to say, is really, really good up until now. It, it's just so efficient and eight, ten coals keep us so warm for a long while. We're really happy with it. So, don't look, the mess boat uh, is a mess, look. Uh, no, we should do some <laughs> washing up. That'll keep us warm. Don't show them that. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen so much wild garlic, Fran. I know. And I need to do a bit of research because somewhere in my memory, I think you can pickle these buds. 
Um, so I need to look it up because I don't think anybody is going to miss a few. <laughs> so what are you picking now for? I think we just have, we've got some big beef tomatoes on the boat and some sourdough bread. So I think we'll have garlic and fried tomatoes on the bread, like a pesto mm. tomatoes, I think. You just have to pick it, it just smells wonderful. I guess with the freezer now, I should make loads of pesto and freeze some. Yeah, but that for later wouldn't, in the wouldn't be any room in the freezer for my ice cream then. <laughs> okay, bad idea. Stinks in here, Fran. I know it does. The whole boat stinks of pickle because I'm making wild garlic bud pickle. I picked the garlic buds the other day. I've never made this before. I don't know if it's going to be any good. So I've only picked enough for one lot because obviously every garlic bud I pick, um, there is no flower for that plant and no seed for next year. So um, with all foraging, you have to be a little bit careful and only pick what you need and from a wide area. Don't just pick everything that you see in one place. Really simple. I've got enough garlic buds to pack into a jar. The jar has been washed and sterilized and is hot. So the garlic buds now go in here. I can use my fingers, can't I? If this works, we'll do it again and fill the jars right up and uh, see what it's like. And in here, I've got 200 mils of apple cider vinegar and two teaspoons of mixed spice, whatever you want. I've got peppercorns, chili, coriander seed, a bay leaf, but you can put whatever you fancy in there and two tablespoons of sugar. And this simply, this is hot, the jar is hot, otherwise it will all crack. This is just going to pour on top. And pop the bay leaf in too. Ideally, the jar would be packed, but this is a trial run, so we'll see how we go. The lid goes on, um, and it's supposed to be ready in two weeks. And they say it's ideal to sprinkle into salads, just have on the side of your plate if you're having a cold lunch. I thought it might actually be quite nice on pizza. Um, I don't know. Two weeks time, we'll let you know what it's like. So would you chop a garlic, each garlic bud up to put on a pizza or would you? I wouldn't because you can eat them whole anyway. They're not really hot. They're a lovely, lovely flavour. You can put them raw into a salad as a bud like that. So I would just put them on whole like a caper. I don't know. The thing with foraging is that there's loads of stuff that they say is good for foraging. It's only good as far as I'm concerned if it tastes good. Don't eat stuff just for the sake of it. There's no point in foraging just because you can. But I think this might be a winner. There's a lot of stuff out there that tastes green, isn't there? There is a lot of stuff that if you were hungry enough, you could <laughs> eat. But, but we've tested things and thought, oh, you know, I'd have to be really hungry. So we won't bother. But I'm hopeful for the garlic bud pickle. And there is, as we've said before, so much garlic this year. Um, I think I'll make another lot and pack the jar and just see how it goes. So we've got some for over the year. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. <laughs> you got anything that was like that one? Right there. <laughs>